Yee-hoo! Welcome to Metals, Non-Metals, and Metalloids. All right, this is just a brief exploration of the major groupings on the periodic table. Let's take a look. And here it is in all of its glory. Uh, so this is a nice colorful periodic table because there are a few things that we need to be sure that you know. All right, let's see, I shall use red, okay? First of all, you have learned some of the families or groups, and you can see them on here. You've got the, um, over here, you've got the alkali metals underneath this one. Under these, this dot here, you've got the alkaline earth metals. Uh, then you have those transition groups. Then over way on the other side, you have the noble gases, and then you have the halogens right there. But there are some essential areas of the periodic table that I want you guys to be aware of. First of all, metals. If you are... And I'm going to make this line like this. If you are in this line and over in this area here, that's going to be including these guys, okay? All of this and all of this and all that. All this area there, these are the metals all the, all the, on the left-hand side of the periodic table. So there are lots. These are the metals, all right? And again, there's a lot of transition metals. You've got the lanthanide and actinide series down here. We break those out. I won't tell you why, but again, all these guys down here, all these guys down here, all the metals. Most of the periodic table are metals, okay? Now, let's change color. We'll go to green, or oh, not green. Uh, let's go to purple. We'll go to purple. If you're on this side, and I go down here, on this side of the periodic table, you are nonmetals. Now, someone's always going to ask me, what about poor hydrogen over here? Hydrogen's a gas, right? It's a nonmetal. Most of the time, yeah, it is. We usually kind of keep hydrogen, we associate hydrogen here. But, just so you know, if you happen to ever take a vacation into the center heart of Jupiter, I don't think you will, but if you decided to, you might actually see hydrogen under that kind of pressure, because Jupiter is so huge, compressed into its metallic state. So at those pressures, hydrogen becomes a metal. But for the most part, it's a gas, and we sort of associate it more with the non-metals. But it's sort of a thing on its own. Um, but anyway, you see it's kind of got a green color anyway. So the greens over here are the non-metals. We'll put the non-metals. Okay. And then you've got, and I'll do it in a nice bright orange color here, then you've got, right in the middle here, you've got these guys coming down here. Yeah, you know what? Orange doesn't seem to be showing up. What about yellow? And we'll do a really big, thick line. Here we go. Here's yellow. You've got these guys all the way in here. they got a uh, sort of a kind of an off red color. These folks are the metalloids. And I'm going to put... Oops. Oh, I think I need to change the size of my marker there. All right. These are the metalloids. Metalloids. Sounds like a weird word. Basically, and I bet you can guess, they are sandwiched between the non-metals and the metals, so they seem to probably have characteristics of both. Metals, they can be, they're, they're shiny. They tend to uh, be good conductors of electricity. They have uh, that, the shininess, we call it a luster. They are malleable, meaning you can pound them into different shapes. All the things you think about when you think of a metal, you know, a lot of these share in common. The non-metals over here, well, they tend to be either gases or liquids or things that, in essence, don't behave like metals, okay? They tend to not be malleable. When you pound them with a hammer, they don't change shape. They tend to break. They're very brittle. Uh, they don't conduct electricity. All those things that are characteristic of non-metals. And in the middle, you've got these guys that you know, have characteristics of both. Let's take, for example, silicon. If you look right there in the middle, that's element number 14. And silicon is a, tends to be a sort of, it's a semiconductor. It kind of conducts, but doesn't conduct like as well as a metal, but it certainly conducts more than a non-metal. And even though you pound it with a hammer and it breaks, it is also shiny and lustrous like a metal. So it's got a combination of, of uh, different things and uh, chemical and physical characteristics that make it like a non-metal and a metal, and therefore we call it a metalloid. And you're going to find that um, arsenic and you know germanium, tellurium, all those other guys in there, they all share similar characteristics 
um, as silicon many times. Okay, so these are the three major groupings on the periodic table in terms of the types of elements they are. Most elements are metals. Um, there's, a, there's a chunk on the right-hand side that are non-metals, and then in the middle, you've got the metalloids.